All right, electronics, uh, semiconductor materials, we already rated it as, as easy. Discrete devices. Now this is, uh, let me qualify this. So in discrete devices, we have the Zener diode, we have the PN junction diode, and uh, that's basically it, right? So diodes, let's just call it diodes. How do we rate diodes, guys? Medium, I agree. I mean, the circuits that we did for diode, they were very challenging. Very difficult circuits that we did. Okay. Multiple diodes. And I told you, like, when the diode count goes more than two diodes, when you get into three diodes, it, it's no longer a three minute problem in most cases, right? Okay. Unless it's pretty obvious what the state of operation of the diode is. And the other problem that we did, if you guys remember, was with the graph graphing of a diode, right? When the diode was turning on and diode was turning off. And then that was a very difficult problem as well. Uh, but yeah, it was not a three minute problem. And the reason is that when you're in a learning phase, you want to sort of overload yourself with the more challenging stuff. Amplifiers. So within amplifiers, we have BJTs and the MOSFETs primarily, right? Let's just call them FETs, uh, which includes JFET as well. JFET is not really an amplifier. It is more of a varistor. But yeah, I agree. It is more on the medium side of things. It looks difficult. If you haven't gone through it, you might be like, hey, I have to remember this condition. And the handbook doesn't help you because it is only giving you the conditions for what? It is giving you conditions for the NMOS and NPN. And for PMOS and PNP, they simply say just reverse the polarities, right? But we systematically worked through multiple practice problems. And we basically looked at what the biasing really means right? So even with that line, you can actually go back and then set up the circuit and then come up with the conditions, okay? And remember the use of the magnitude, right? Remember the use of the magnitude sign, so that is really helpful. Amplifiers, operational amplifier, easy, difficult? I would say it's easy. What do you guys think? I would say it's easy. Now, <clears throat> The non-inverting and the inverting stuff that is in the handbook, useless, useless. I make one small modification to that circuit and those formulas are out in the dust in the dustbin, right? But when you use KCL and just the two conditions for MOS uh, for op amp, knowing that current can never enter and V plus is equal to V minus, no matter if I stack three op amps in series, you know, or whatever, you know, gymnastics I want to do with them, I can break them in small pieces and solve them. Correct. So KCL comes to our rescue and it all becomes very easy. Power electronics in the context of the FE exam is super easy in my opinion, well, especially when I compare it to P power, but because all you're worried about is what? Just the uh, one rectifier equation and uh, what else was there? Um, your uh, boost, bug boost converters, right? Okay, if you guys are calling it medium, I'll say it's medium, but I know what is in P power, right? <laughs> so compared to that, this is just nothing, right? So let's just still rate in medium if you guys find it challenging, right? Power electronics. Instrumentation. How would you rate instrumentation? This is more mostly revolving around the devices, RTDs and, you know, um, your Wheatstone bridge and transducers, right? There are some equations over there. And if you guys remember homework assignment problem that I had, the very last problem on this topic, it seems so easy, but the math became super challenging with the log, right? So let's call it easy, right? So when we take a step back uh, and we look at it, so it's almost a half and half split between easy and medium in electronics, right? And granted some of these topics because it's circuits, right? So with circuits, they can do a lot. They have a lot of freedom to do whatever they want to do with circuits, right? So very quickly, easy stuff can turn into more difficult. But I think we have a blueprint. We have a game plan in place, how to tackle each one of them. It does take a little bit of time to prepare for this section. So yeah, you need to be a little bit patient and give it the due time and attention. Okay. And the other thing is that it is a heavy hitter, right? It's seven to 11 questions. So one of the big five topics. Moving on, my personal favorite power systems, right? So how do we rate this? The the, the first item, power factor, single three phase, uh, voltage regulation, voltage drop. Let's call it medium. It's not super simple, straightforward. Then you have the delta Y uh, <clears throat> losses and whatnot efficiency. Let's call it a medium. Transformer connection and uh, impedance. Let's call it a medium. And motor generator synchronous uh, machines. Let's call it a medium. It's a solid medium. It's a solid medium, right? And you can... <clears throat> excuse me, just by looking at it. And if you take my word for it, saying that P, knowing that P power is one notch more difficult, what does that tell you about P power? If power systems is all medium and P power is one notch higher, then you are basically in an overall hard level of difficulty, right? Not to scare you though, you know, I can teach P power all day long, right? Uh, it's much more fun to prepare for, a lot more interesting, a lot more practical. And you guys probably sense that when we were going through P 
power systems. In fact, in topics that were not related to power as well, I, I used to borrow examples from power systems, right? To help you guys understand some of the analogies and whatnot. So the time that you have spent in power systems it has has already paid dividends right in future okay you just need to cross this bridge past the fe and then realize those dividends you know your cash is sitting for you okay um down the road so a heavy hitter even heavier than electronics if you look at it closely it was 7 to 11 and this is 8 to 12 right and super important for pe power uh very practical section and my personal favorite so do spend a little bit extra time. In fact, in motors and generators, I have included some of the lectures that I've created for PE power in here. And I have, uh, you know, uh, in the interest of time, I've actually labeled some of that stuff as supplementary lecture so that if you're short on time, you can potentially skip it. All right. Then we have electromagnetics. Um, so overall electromagnetics, what did I tell you about this? Overall, I think it is one of the hardest topics on the exam. Okay. But but they have actually done you guys a favor, right? Because the way they're sort of outline what's required for electromagnetics has sort of diluted it, right? They're saying that, okay, these are just a bunch of equa equations and transmission lines and this and that, and you're fine, okay? I've taken grad level courses in EMAG, and to be honest, the math is so advanced that it just takes you a lot of time to catch up with math, and everything else starts after that. And the visualization and the three dimensions so that makes it all the more difficult so in the live training i sort of went for like a destructive testing approach in uh, electromagnetics remember the practice problems that we did were kind of tricky right they relied upon your visualization how you're sketching the diagrams and whatnot but if you look at the nc sample exam for the most part it's not nearly as bad okay in fact they've played more with the math math portion of it rather than the visualization portion of it i think problem number 68 in the nc sample exam is taking a square root of a complex number which we have discussed in a lot of detail already okay somebody sent me an email this morning i don't know if the student is in a live training program or not i guess not because you wouldn't be asking that question if uh he had been in the live training because we've addressed it in a lot of detail. Anyways, so electrostatic magnetostatics, this is talking about the charge, you know, stationary charge and the magnetic field, non-dynamic. So let's call it hard, okay? Electrodynamics. So we have Maxwell's equations and wave propagation, okay? So let's call it hard. Transmission lines, transmission lines, guys. What's medium about it? It's plug and chug. Reflection coefficient and SWR. I think you guys are letting the overall difficulty level of a section in. I will, I, I, I'm going to veto this. I'm going to say this is easy. Okay. Transmission line doesn't get easier than that. You just need to uh, remember that, you know, where you use phasers, right? So a reflection coefficient, you use a phaser, right? And for your um, SWR, you use a magnitude, right? Um, characteristic impedance, super easy to calculate. Propagation constant, super easy to calculate. So this is really easy stuff, right? Um, and when we look at our Maxwell's equations, if you, we, we made an effort to actually create a physical sense out of them, right? Relate them back to Gauss's law, Faraday's law, Maxwell's, uh, and uh, what else? Ampere's law, right? So it becomes more digestible. Now, electrostatics, magnetostatics, when you're talking about stationary charges or the electric fields, I think sketching is going to come to your rescue. And we did discuss it, and you guys were pretty transparent about the fact that it's just out of laziness that you don't want to sketch it, right? Uh, a lot of you remember that discussion. So don't be lazy, guys. Okay. If even if it's like just some random, you know, lines and dots and just throw them there, I'm, I'm telling you, once you lay it out on a piece of paper it can help you visualize okay it's not saving you time not not sketching is actually wasting your time because you are thinking that you're attempting this problem but you are actually setting yourself for failure you might as well just flag the question and move on okay you're getting a false sense of you know confidence that hey i'm doing some calculations but in reality if you don't know the visualization or if you haven't put those charges in the correct place on a three-dimensional plane or wherever the sheet is or the line is or whatnot, right? You're doing yourself a disfavor, okay? Mm -hmm.